Suppose I have a system of axes where I have a horizontal axis, an x-axis, and a vertical axis, the y-axis. We know that these two axes are perpendicular to each other. Suppose I move along the x and I make a movement which I'm going to call Vx. Now Vx is along the x-axis, it's in one dimension. I've moved zero meters along the y. Okay, so Vx is movement in one dimension. If I move similarly Vy, displacement Vy up on the y-axis, I've moved in one dimension. Okay? Is the way of covering Vy and Vx simultaneously? Well, if I was to move along Vx, then make a right angle and move upwards like that, notice these two movements are now par parallel to each other. So this is also movement Vy. If I could also make another parallel movement to Vx there, where these two movements meet is where I need to be. So if I move from here to this point, like that, I have moved in two dimensions. So let's call this movement V. So movement V represents movement along the X and along the Y. So it's in two dimensions. Okay. Notice now, Vx and Vy represents what we call the components of that movement. So Vx represents the component along the X. Vy represents the component along the Y axis. So Vx and Vy are termed perpendicular components. Suppose a ship sails 800 meters from a port at a bearing of 0, 035 degrees. Let's represent this movement on a system of axes. Now, the 35 degrees will be measured from the north and will be this angle here. That will be 35 degrees. And then this angle here becomes 55 degrees. Okay. How are we going to calculate the perpendicular components? Well, we know where the perpendicular components are going to be. Vx and Vy. So what we need to do is make a right angled triangle so we can use the trig ratios to calculate Vx and Vy. Okay. So. Okay. So there's a right angle triangle. We can see where Vx and Vy is. We can now use the trig ratios. Where is the opposite side? Well, this side is also Vy, this side is also Vx, okay. Vx cos theta equals adjacent of hypotenuse. What is the adjacent side? It's Vx. What is the hypotenuse side? It's the 800. So, su substituting into that formula, we get cos 55 equals Vx over 800. Vx equals 800 cos of 55. I get Vx equals 458,86 in the eastern direction. Similarly, Vy will be equal to 800 times the sine of 55 to give me 655,32 in the north direction. Okay, that is how you can calculate by using the trig ratios. Now, instead of going through all that process of writing cos theta, sine theta equals, we can just use the formula Vx equals V cos theta for the x component. For the y component, Vy equals V times sine theta. But there is a catch. Where is the angle theta going to be? Very important to always figure out where the angle theta is. Okay. The angle theta is 
measured from the horizontal axis to the vector like that that is why we needed the 55 degrees in this case if the vector is in that quadrant very simple angle theta will be there between the vector and the horizontal if the vector is in that quadrant again very simple angle theta will be there now we can use vx equals v cos theta and vy equals v sine theta it's practice time calculate the x and y components of forces f1 and f2 below if f1 equals 100 newtons and f2 equals 50 newtons press pause at this instant and get on with this calculation once you're done you're going to press play and the solutions will be provided.